we're getting started on the lane project, all right? And the first thing I gotta do before I can start prepping for gravel is get this culvert in. It means I gotta take down some of this fence. This fence is kinda like an old jalopy. It's just been kinda patchwork together. These boards that are on here just keep, you can see how they're just falling off and not staying put. And some of these boards had one screw holding them in and some had four and they're all splitting. They're just kind of junky. The whole thing's junky. And I don't, we don't have animals. We bought this place. These pastures were here. They had some animals. You can see the electric fence. I just need to take all that wiring and everything down. We're never going to have animals in here. That's just not why we bought it. We bought it for the land to do other things with. And I do like the fences. They have some aesthetic appeal, um, but they're not worth our time and money investing to, to fix them all up, at least at this point. Maybe time will change that. So anyway, back in the winter and the fall, this is the site of a huge pond. Well, a, mini, a small pond, I guess, but it's in the wrong location, right in the drive. And this is seeing a lot of traffic. It was a beautiful two-lane track last summer. Um, but we knew it wouldn't last more than likely and uh, it didn't just didn't have time to get to it last winter and uh, With finishing the barn and all the heavy traffic up and down here. It just made it a, a real nightmare You can see these deep ruts. So we got to get a Culvert in here to, to divert the water flow. I'm gonna put some ditches. We just got this new cool tool called the dish box um, And it's gonna put in ditches along the fence on the west side. Okay, and then it kind of runs east to west, sloping down towards, well you can see those burned out trees and everything down there. It runs, the water generally runs down that way. So we're gonna divert all the flow underneath here. We gotta tackle that first. I gotta get some gravel brought in to put around here and everything else and, and solidify this too. But I thought it'd be a good project for the Summit Tractor. I thought it'd be a good little one-two punch here with the stump wrecker on the front, the box plate on the back. We switched it up really quick early on, show you the HD stump wrecker. We have pretty easy soil around here. It's a heavy tractor. It can handle a larger stump wrecker if you want to. This is kind of the, the, that small section of tractors that can go either way with a mini or an HD bucket. And so we'll show you the HD bucket on here. We showed you the mini bucket on there before. Unfortunately, no rocks, no roots in this area here to really deal with. And so it's just kind of getting through. The ruts were the hardest part. We had to use the box blade to kind of scrape out and smooth out those ruts. Otherwise, you're when you're your front axle is going up and down. You're trying to use a loader to, to get a consistent depth with your stump bucket. It's like impossible to do. You need to have some form of consistency to be able to do that. And this combination actually worked out really, really well. Uh, fun little project here. I wish I had a couple more of these culverts to put in around here, but I, I don't think, I don't think we do. Now I made a rookie mistake. I, I got to admit it. Uh, the keen eye will notice what looks to be perhaps a root about in the middle of that lane and it actually is our fiber line going back to the barn so thinking we were in the middle of nowhere right back here i did not call miss dig that is completely my fault um, in fact i'm the ones that directed the fiber company to put the line right here they did it i was here when they did it i walked them down this lane and i told them where to put it um, what can i say that's a knucklehead move and, and i did it so gotta call them pay whatever the heck that bill is to get that fixed. But that's what that is. That's the fiber line, not a tree root. Uh, stump bucket handled that pretty well though. Didn't even know it was there. So, you know, that's a good thing. Now, we got this culvert down in here, 10 inch diameter culvert. I think that's the ID. The OD looks a bit bigger than 10 inches. And the first half of it on the high side looks perfect. All the way to about the middle of the lane, maybe just past that. We're gonna have to do some more work on the exit side of things, okay? To lower that down a bit and then get that discharge side to really flow out. Right now, it would just sit there and pool inside this culvert. So we'll finish that up off camera, but we just got a little bit of work left to do there just to taper that and feather that out. But we're not gonna be burying this or anything right now anyway. We gotta get more material brought in, get some, oh, I think we're gonna do 22A as a base and then top it off with 21AA, if I remember correctly, if I'm getting my numbers straight. But we're gonna have a lot of work ahead of us here. And this is part of a just the tip of the iceberg of a video that I did a while back about can you pay for your tractor with one project and doing this whole gravel lane from the road all the way back here between the pastures to the barn, around the barn, some storage areas, kind of some pad areas for our trailers and for all of our tractor attachments. You know, if I were to hire all of this work out, it would be so, so incredibly expensive and instead 
buying a tractor, doing the manual labor myself, yeah, it's costing me time. There's a trade-off for that too. But it is satisfying to do it, and at the end of the day, you could wind up with a tractor instead of paying someone else to do it. So this is my first time using this combination with the stump wrecker and the box blade, and honestly, I think it was just a an absolute perfect combination because that stump wrecker trenches out everything, and then you can drop down uh, the box blade to, to pull everything that is kind of brought up to the surface and to the sides and get that out of the way. You can go forwards and backwards with the stump record to kind of just keep working that trench out however you want and then use that box blade just to pull that material away. It just it was fantastic. So it did exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, really pleased with how it turned out and hopefully you get another good look at these two tools and these are just simple hunks of steel. So really nice. I, I will say though that hydraulic top link on the box blade is a game changer. I use that, I probably use that 10 to 15 times adjusting the angle to make it more aggressive or less aggressive uh, depending on which part of um, this little culvert area I was working in. So overall, successful day, except for that fiber line. That makes it unsuccessful, I suppose. But I'm gonna count it as a success because I'm feeling good. It's a nice, beautiful spring day. Birds are chirping. See a few bugs out, that's okay. But I'm just happy we're out here doing some work and I hope you enjoyed it too. So stick around, see how this project goes. You're gonna see this whole lane transformed, which has been almost unusable. You can see the mud is drying up finally. The, the pond is down just to a little tiny little puddle. Step in the right direction. A lot of spring projects ahead of us.
I know you folks have a lot of projects of your own to tackle, so if you're looking for a new tool to tackle that project, check us out at goodworkstractors.com. We have all sorts of stuff for the front end loader and the three point hitch. We ship all over the country, we have rewards and even financing as well. If you want to see what other kind of projects we've been up to, check out the other videos, over 600 other videos for you to watch out there. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon. Yeah.